Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. So, welcome back for another lab. Now, this is a, a case study, if you like, of OSPF configuration. Um, we will use this topology for a couple of things coming up. So, we'll build on it. Now, what I've done is, um, for my students, would have done a Acme design, which had um, six VLANs off the HQ site with multiple switches. So, to replicate that local area network that they designed as part of their assessment items what I've done is just put a multi-layer switch in there I've got it pre-configured with the usual suspects of VLANs on it so all what I did um, put on IP routing and configured it up with the first six interfaces hooked up to the various VLANs to a PC to get the interface active and then configured the SVIs for each VLAN as their gateways and by putting the host machine there the VLANs became active and if we do a show IP route their networks are in the routing table if I didn't put the PCs there they weren't act considered active and we can't cheat with the no, no keep alive signals in packet tracer so just simple and that's configured in the branch offices as well so I've just done six VLANs in the six three locations and have configured the interface coming up to the router as a layer 3 interface so that's it. Um, I've only put the base configs on our routers. So if we look on that, we've got the host name, password encryptions on, no domain lookup, and no IP addresses on the interfaces. I've whacked in some serial interfaces as I'm going to do a bonus activity and go through the configuration of OSPF with the current day which is with the um, gigabit interfaces for NBN here in Australia those other things but you may come across old tech out there that are still using serial interfaces so I'll go through the configuration of that as well in a add-on to this. Um, so that's all that I've done to these. And I went a little bit overboard and did the 15 ports. Yes, I just cut and paste the base configs from the switches over. Um, this is going to be our WAN simulation. Now our routers only have two interfaces, so I can do direct links and have a mesh topology. Um, so I've put a switch in the center of it and I've used a multi-layer switch so it gives us gigabit speeds. Um, 
I know it's totally overkill for here in Australia, but um, it's fun. All right, so that's the basic configuration items that we've got. So now let's get into the OSPF configuration. So need to set up HQ. As I said, I only got the base config. And what we need to do now is configure our interfaces. Now, if I remember correctly, we have the gigabit one facing inwards and the zero facing back out. All right, so with that, we can go to our interface one. So one's facing out. So let's bring it over to here. And it'll help if I actually got in the global config, wouldn't it? Why didn't you say anything? Oh, that's right. I'm recording and I don't have an audience today. So, the IP address for our WAN is 192.168.254 and it's the 8 network. So, we'll go 9 and it's a slash 29, so that's um, 248. And our description will be man link, and we'll do a no shot, and our interface zero zero zero, and this will be an IP address coming back in. So this one is 192.168. Now I made them on the zero network and it's gonna be dot one and it's gonna be a slash 30 link. Description is link to, oh, that's the HQ LAN. Alright, so that's our interfaces up. Now, I'm going to simulate an ex extra link to the service provider separate to our WAN connections. So I'm going to use a loopback interface for this. And I'm going to just randomly go 172, 16, 10, 10, and we'll go a point to point on that one is as well. So that will be our link to ISP. And that is our interfaces configured. Now HQ is up. Now I suppose we should start actually doing the config for the area that you want. So OSPF is configured with router OSPF and we need a process ID which can be any number between 1 and 65,000 so we'll just go 10 
Now, if you're doing it the old way, you can use um, network statements. And as we have a loopback interface, it would automatically collect the loopback address as its router ID. But in, especially today with OSPF version 3 supporting IPv6, we really should get into the habit of doing this manually. Uh, excuse me, I was just about to have a massive sneeze. So I just did a quick pause. So, command router ID, it's HQ, so we're going to go 111. Now, this format is dotted decimal, it takes the form of an IPv4 address so we just need to give it a unique number now the fun co comes into how do we go about making active interfaces for it now if I'd done this with loopbacks on the router simulating all the VLANs I just could have done a quick and easy network statement um, for the 192.168 network and we'd be up and running now I just remembered something I've got a nasty feeling I forgot to do yes I did a typo on the On that that's all right all right so what we will do is go to each interface and join the interface to the routing process so if we go to interface G 000 now this is the typo I did because when I configured the address on the switches I use 19 instead of 192 and so I'm just gonna quickly change the IP address to 19.168.01 so that it matches the other end on the switch and here we go OSPF and now what we're doing is we're joining the interface to the process so what we need to do is tell it which process we want and then which area it is which is area zero okay and that tells it that that interface is an active member of the routing process so we jump over to the other interface which is G001 and do the same thing IP OSPF process 10 area 0 all right so save that now if we show IP protocols we have the process there we have our little number but we have no other information because it hasn't formed any neighbors now this link is an IP link so guess what we can do on our switch we can jump in there and go in the global config and do the same thing router OSPF 10 and we can put the router 
ID in. It's in the 111 network, but it's the second device. So we're going to do it dot two. And then give it off. Now, I'm going to cheat here a little bit and go old school with a network statement. And I'm going to use the network ID of 192.168.0.0. And give it a wildcard mask of zero zero two five five two five five area zero. Now that's going to pick up all my VLANs, and because I made a slight tactical error in my IP address range, I need to include. This one as well. So you saw on HQ we went to the interfaces and joined the interfaces to the process. This one we're using the old version of doing it using the network statements. So that's showing you the two ways you can connect. So network address statement wildcard mask and the area that it's active in now again if we go show ip protocols we see what networks it's getting it's got two known devices and if we rinse and repeat over here on B1, so here we'll get in the global config again, go into interface. G001 which is pointing to our center it has an IP address of the 192 168 254 now we had 9 so we'll go 10 just to 248 and our description and link and do a no shut and then we go to interface G000 and its IP address is going to be 19.168 and this is the 100 network and we did a slash 32 And the description is linked to B1 LAN. And we're going to open it up. And again, we're going to go router OSPF routing ID 10. And the router ID is going to be 222. Dot one because it's the second area well not area second instance so it's our branch and again we'll use the IP OSPF 10 area 0 to join them to the process and there we have it loading up 
And if we quickly jump over the two and go through the same process, I'll take a pause here and through the magic of camera work, we'll get this configured up. All right, welcome back. I'm pretty sure you didn't want to watch me configuring the other switches and that, which exactly the same as what we did. But you can see here that we have some adjacencies coming up. And so if we do a show IP protocols, can see all the neighbors that it knows. So it's found the HQ, it's found branch one and branch two. So if we do a show IP route now, span this out so it's all on the screen we have lots of networks so we can see we have all of our lovely 100 200 networks which are the links between our routers and our switches in our lands and then we have all the VLAN networks coming up. Now, due to the fact that we don't have a 260 network, because it doesn't go up that high, we use 251 for that particular instance of VLAN 60 on branch two. So we have everything being shared from our multi-layer switches that are running a routing protocol connecting to our router and going out. So we've got everything being shown. Now, how do we tell everybody about our link to the outside world to the ISP. Well, if we go back to our HQ and log back into our config and put in a static route. So our default route is quad zero quad zero and we're going out loop back one. So this is all what, if it was a live interface, that's all what you have to do. Now, the next instance that we want to do is go back into our routing process and we want to propagate that default route. So it's default information originate. Okay, hit enter. Now, if we jump out of that and let's come all the way down into our multi-layer switch and do a show IP route. Again, expand the screen out and go up. We now have a gateway of last resort entered via the connection to the router. And down the bottom here, you'll see it as a OSPF E2, which means it's an injected external network 
and it's our quad zero. Now, one of the things with default information originate, the way it works is it doesn't add the metric values up. Now, the other thing we've got going is all of our routes are the same distance away, which is four. Now, because they're all on gigabit links. So let's do the other thing that we should do on all of our routers OSPF 10 is the auto cost reference bandwidth. Now we have gigabit so our reference bandwidth should be at least a thousand. To future proof the network, we could take it up to 10,000 to represent a 10 gig interface, but a thousand shall be all that we really need to do. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in. Now we gotta go around to all of our others within the network and do the same thing. So again, router OSPF 10, paste our referencing. It's important that you get the referencing consistent throughout all of them or else we'll have a problem with the metrics going forward so router RSPF 10 paste now you're going what's the difference it's not going to make a difference, it's still going to be one. Correct, it is still going to be one. But at least it will be done correctly. Because the optional one where we come back and do the WAN links via serial cables You'll see what I have in mind for that one. So I'll just finish this off and come back. Okay, so back again. Let's jump back down into our little box here. And we now have a slightly different metric. So it does affect how things are counted. So the reason being, if you actually come into any of our switches and do a show interface gigabit zero 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 one. One zero one. So these are recorded as 10 megabits per second because our desktops only have fast Ethernet interfaces in them. So these ports that are triggering our VLANs are not going to have a value of 1. So when it comes through, this is why we get 11s and 12s coming in. And we went through that. So 
What else is there to show you? Um, show IP route OSPF. We'll just show you the OSPF routes for the network. Uh, what was the other show command? Show IP OSPF neighbors. So you can see the neighbors now. Their full state, which is good. So we can see there that one is a designated and we have an interesting two as backup. So one of them should have been a DR other. We can go through and do the priority values and the timers but I would not recommend doing timers just as a point of, of interest um, what else is there priority you just go into the interface so if I was setting up priority I didn't want me HQ to be the one that has the higher priority so that it tends to get the election done so well, what you would do is go into the interface facing the world which is one and we would type in IP OSPF priority and then we would increase it from one to something else and that would help it in its election prospects now uh, interface OSPF no that's wrong let me think about that so Gigabit 0001 OSPF. Now I've gotten that all OSPF interface. God, my memory is gone from, from me today. So no O. So obviously it's going to be IP interface, IP OSPF, OSPF, and then we're going to have our interface G001. Yeesh. So here's our IP address, our router ID, process ID, type of network, the cost, who is the designated router and the back of that de designated router, their timers, and down the bottom, their neighbors. So three, it's not a designated router at all and two is and that's the core of the OSPF configuration which is taking us 35 minutes so that's long enough I'll call it quits there and I'll do a second recording where I'll just go through the serial configurations and show you the difference that has and the massive difference a serial line because it's so much slower has on the costing all right catch you in the next one